Okay, so uh, before we begin, um, so there were questions about um, the graphs being too noisy in the assignment uh, when you run just n is equal to 20. Um, well, I think like the T is assigned, designed it to be n is equal to 20 to save computation, but it looks like running 2000 runs is just a couple of minutes. So I will update the assignment. Uh, PDF, um, but I can also tell it here. Like, so you can just run it for 2000 runs instead of 20 runs. Like, it's going to give you much more smoother curves, and it really doesn't just take that much time. So, um, so, given that a lot of you were not participating in the tutorial, uh, one thing that I want to highlight is I don't know how many of you are still not aware of Colabs. So, you don't need to run your experiments in your laptop, like, you can run your experiments in Colab. Uh, which is a free compute service given by Google. And you can do your notebook with Colab and finally just download the notebook. Okay, so you can do everything with Colab. And you can even get GPUs with Colab and it's for free. So to make use of it. <coughs> okay, let's begin. So as I mentioned before, like we are going to see like a few ways of solving the Bellman optimality equation in an efficient way, in, in, in an, as efficient as possible, okay? So the first approach we are going to talk today is uh, dynamic programming, okay? So you might have seen dynamic programming uh, in a basic algorithms course or, or in, well, they are, they are almost everywhere in computer science. Like whenever you want to efficient computation to use dynamic programming, right? Like, so the same holds here as well. So like, we want to compute the optimal policies given a perfect model of the environment. Okay, so given an MDP, okay, so compute the optimal policy. Okay. So one way is solving the system of nonlinear equations, which we are not going to talk about because it's impractical. Uh, but we are going to talk about a slightly more efficient version of doing it, uh, which is the idea of dynamic programming. Okay. Now, before we begin, I should highlight that dynamic programming also requires the model of the world. It requires the MDP to be given. Okay. And it is also computationally a bit expensive. Okay. Uh, in the future, we are going to see better and better solutions for reinforcement learning, which doesn't require the model of the world and computationally cheaper than dynamic programming. Okay. However, it is essential that we first understand the DP solutions because they form the foundation for the various other approximations that we are going to see in this course. Okay. So now let's start with dynamic programming. Like again, we are going to make the finite MDP assumption, which means I have finite set of states, actions, and rewards which also means I have access to P of S dash or given S comma A. Okay, now, so the key idea in dynamic programming is to use the value, fun value functions to organize and structure the search for good policies. Okay, so to do that, we are going to build on top of optimal optimality equations. Okay, so let's recap Bellman optimality equations. Okay. Okay, we are in trouble if the pencil stops. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, what's the case, do, does anyone have an app, well, is it a new version? Like I want the old version Apple pencil. Okay, hopefully we can finish with the 5%, let's see. Or I'll take, I'll charge in between when I'm talking. Okay, so the Bellman, opti let's recap the Bellman optimality equations. Like, so V star of yes is given by max over A, expected value of R T plus one plus gamma times V star of S T plus one, given S T is equal to yes, A T is equal to A, right? If I have to expand the equation, it becomes max over A, summation over S dash R dash, 
probability of s dash or given as comma a r plus gamma times v star of s dash i'm writing these equations again and again like uh, just to make sure you remember them okay so this is probably one of the very few things that i expect you to remember like other things you can derive by yourself like but these are so central you're going to keep using bellman equations again and again so it's it's worth taking some time to remember this so q star of s comma a is given by expected value of r t plus 1 plus gamma times max over a dash q star of s t plus 1 comma a dash given s t is equal to s a t is equal to a right or in other words summation over s dash r p of s dash r given s comma a r plus gamma times max over a dash q star of s dash comma a dash. okay now the dynamic programming solutions are obtained by turning these bellman optimality equations into update rules okay so how are we going to do that so one simple solution which kind of someone pointed out when we talked about bellman equations is we can start with some initial values for all these v values or q values and iteratively update uh, them based on the bellman optimality equation right like so now we know that when the left hand side is equal to right hand side for this equation we have achieved the optimal uh, policy right so it is only for the optimal policy this equation holds so which means i keep changing this value what well, it's sorry it's only for the optimal value functions that this equation holds so if i if i keep updating my value functions until i reach the equivalence then like i have converged to the optimal value function is that idea clear okay now let's talk about how to do that uh, in detail okay so so now there are two components in play here okay so one is given policy pi okay how to estimate v pi of s okay now given the value functions one can talk about what is the optimal policy based on the value function right like so the second question is given v pi of s okay how to find a better policy let's say pi dash okay so <clears throat> these problems are like, so they, they like we're going to talk about them each each of them separately okay so the first problem where given the pi we estimate the value of the pi which we have already seen uh, in the previous uh, session is known as policy evaluation okay now uh, policy evaluation is also known as prediction problem okay now this second problem where given the value finding the better policy right so this is known as policy improvement okay when you combine these two things together like we are going to get the whole control solution okay so let's go through them one by one so first let's talk about policy evaluation <clears throat> okay so so policy evaluation is basically this prediction question where given an arbitrary policy phi okay so how to compute v phi okay so now let's write let's write the v phi so v phi of s is given by expected value of gt given st is equal to s right now this is basically expected value of r t plus 1 plus gamma times g t plus 1 given s t is equal to s right now this is expected value of r t plus 1 plus gamma times v pi of s t plus 1 given s t is equal to s right 
and I can just expand this again. So we have V pi of yes is equal to summation over A, pi of A given yes, summation over S dash R, P of S dash R given S comma A, R plus gamma times V pi of S dash. Okay, so this is the usual Bellman equation. Now let's just call this equation as equation star. Okay, now, the existence and uniqueness of this value function is guaranteed as long as gamma is less than one, okay? Uh, or eventual termination is guaranteed, okay? So now, as I mentioned before, like we are not going to <coughs> prove the existence of like the unique value function. Uh, for now, let's just take it for granted. Okay, now, as we mentioned before, like if you have access to the dynamics function, then this is a system of linear equations, like where you, do, you have n states. So it's a system of n equations with n unknowns. So the solution is straightforward, okay? However, it is very computationally expensive, like when you have really many, many states, okay? So what we are going to do today is an iterative solution. Okay. Now to do the iterative solution, it is really simple. Like I'm going to start with some initial V0. Okay, some initial V0, like my initial value estimate. And then I'm going to consider a sequence of approximate value functions, V2, V3, V4, and so on. Okay, such that I get better and better estimates. So how do I get better and better estimates? I can directly turn this equation into an update equation, okay? So V at K plus one time, the value of the state, yes, is given by expected value of, well, maybe let me directly write um, the equation from here, right? Like, so it's basically summation over A, pi of A given yes, summation over S dash R, probability of S dash R given S comma A, they are all same. Now R plus gamma times V K of S dash. From my previous iteration K, I had some estimate for S dash, right? So I'm going to use the previous estimates for S dash to compute the current estimate for yes. So now imagine you have 100 states, okay? So if you have 100 states, then you can have this V0 vector, which is a vector of 100 value functions, right? You can compute a new V1 vector, which is going to be computed based on this update equation, okay? So then you compute V2, then you compute V3, okay? So now, when would this algorithm converge? So when would you see, okay, let's say you see VK of S is equal to VK plus one of S for all S. Okay, now what does that mean? Yeah. VK is V5. Yeah, so this just means that VK is equal to V5. Okay, so maybe let me write it clearly. If VK plus one of pi, sorry, of S, is equal to VK of S for all S, then that just means that VK is equal to VK plus one is equal to V5, okay? Or in other words, V5 is the fixed point for this update, okay? So V5 is the fixed point for this update, okay? Now, again, one can prove that this sequence of VKs, right? We can show that this converges to V pi as K goes to infinity under the same conditions of that, that guarantees that V pi exists, okay? So we will not do that proof here. And this whole idea of evaluating a policy and coming up with the value function by using iterative updates using the Bellman equation, right? Like, so this has a name. So this is called iterative policy evaluation.
Okay. Now this iterative policy evaluation that we are doing, right? So this update rule that you have here. So this kind of update rules are also called expected updates. We call it expected update because we are considering all possible actions, all possible next states and construct an expected value function. Okay. On the other hand, like we can have another class of algorithms, which we will see in the next week, uh, where instead of taking expected value, you can have sample state and sample actions. Like so, like you sample one action, one next action, and you sample one next state and construct this update equation. Okay. So those kind of sample updates are not uh, like, we are not going to see them today, but like we are going to see them next week. Okay. But for now we will work with this expected updates. Okay, so now how to implement this policy evaluation efficiently? Uh, question? Yes. Just want to make sure that we still have that strong assumption that they exist to the uh, dynamics function. Yes, we still have, that's what I said, said in the beginning, right? So VP methods are limited because they still assume dynamic access to dynamics, okay? But in the next week, we are going to see what if you don't have access to the dynamic function? Or what if you have partial access? Like so, for example, for example, in, in certain applications, you might know exactly how the world behaves, okay? But still, it is very difficult to construct the probability function, okay? However, you can interact with the world and get the next state or the get get the next reward and so on. So, so when you have partial access to the model of the world, like like how to use that efficiently or when you have no access to the model of the world how to use it efficiently so we are going to see all such generalizations in the next couple of weeks okay so for now we have access to um, the exact dynamics function okay now let's talk about how to implement this efficiently okay now you are going to implement this in your assignment so how to implement this efficiently right like so so one so one could use two arrays so VK of yes and VK plus one of yes. Okay. Now the first array is going to have all your previous estimate of the value function of states. Then the new array is new estimate. Okay. Now this requires two times number e like on the number of states. Okay. However, you can also do in place updates. Like, like if you go back to this update equation, right? So, so instead of using VK of yes dash here, Let's say I already computed the new estimate for s dash. Okay. Now we know that the new estimate is better than the old estimate, right? So why don't we directly use the new estimate? So, so the, this is computationally cheap. Okay. Like like or not computationally. Memory wise cheap because like you, you have only one vector now. You don't need to keep track of two vectors. But luckily this is also computationally more efficient. Okay. So this in Okay. So this in place version of uh, policy evaluation will converge faster than the two, two vector version. Okay. Now, <coughs> I just want to mention a quick um, like terminology uh, that you, you will see maybe in the assignments and also in the other algorithms. So whenever I say like sweep, okay, it just means I update all the states once. Okay, so if I update all the states once, then I have swept the entire state space. Okay, so you will do multiple sweeps. Each sweep is one iteration. Like in one iteration, you go through all the states, update their uh, values. Second sweep, you update all the states, and so on. So, so it's kind of like it's kind of equivalent to iterations in ML. Okay, now I told you that V K converges to VPI when K tends to infinity, right? But in, in practice, we cannot wait for the limit convergence. We have to stop somewhere. So like one simple heuristic to stop is whenever you don't see a lot of, there's always going to be some minor update, okay? So you just look at the threshold of the update and you can stop based on the threshold, okay? So now here is the algorithm. I don't know if it's here. Okay, it's here. So, so this is iterative policy evaluation for estimating v pi. Okay. So you have a small threshold. Okay. So this threshold tells when to stop. 
and you initialize the v function for all state arbitrarily except for terminal states because for terminal states the v function has to be zero okay you, you set it to zero you don't update it okay but you're going to update the v function of the non terminal states using this loop so you see that for each yes so this is the sweep okay for each state you back up the old value function and you construct the new value function okay and you compute the difference so if you have changed let's say 0.3 then that is your delta and we can set for example if delta is less than 0.01 i stop or if delta is less than 0.001 i stop okay so so that is something that you decide okay so any questions about policy evaluation so we still haven't reached the interesting part like where we are going to use this to find the better policy yeah this delta ever decreasing you are saying delta is max of delta and other thing oh it is just to keep uh, just to find the maximum change in one sweep so delta is defined as the maximum change for any state in one iteration let's say you have 10 states no when exactly would you stop like when oh you will stop when delta is less than theta so theta is the threshold that you define so for example let's say you define theta is equal to 0.1 okay it means you do one sweep if there is any update which is more than 0.1 you continue so in your first delta let's say is 5 then you will never stop so if first delta is 5 then you continue it's max of delta so delta will never decrease right oh no that no you reset delta in the beginning of every loop okay, okay any other questions now let's actually see how this works in practice okay so so here is a um another simple grid world okay so in this grid world like you it's a four cross four grid where these are terminal states okay in all the other states you get a reward of minus 1 until you reach the terminal state okay and when you reach the terminal state you get a reward of 0 on uh, on the episode ends okay and this is an undiscounted setting there is no like gamma is equal to 1 okay now here is sorry so here is so so we are going to start with a random policy okay so i'm going to estimate the value function for like i'm going to start with this random policy i'm going to come do policy evaluation okay so now you can see that initially i initialize everything to zero i do some updates this is after one sweep this is after two sweep and this is after three sweep and this is after 10 sweeps and in the limit okay so for every okay i think the video is not working so probably i will use this time to charge my pencil a bit just give me a minute okay so once the video resolves itself can be working yeah uh, so in this case you actually change the policy okay so that's a good question so i'm going to come to that um i'm just hoping that this video would so every time i move i swipe fast that camera doesn't recognize it so that's the problem probably it's a very low quality camera okay it works uh okay so that's a very good question so are we changing the policies here okay we are not changing the policies here so the right hand side is not part of policy evaluation okay so that is part of the second part of our discussion okay so for now ignore the right hand side just look at the left hand side you can see that you start with some all zeros and eventually you reach some 
final like value function right like so in this case like, like this, this seems to be the final value function now what is in the right hand side so the right hand side is policy improvement okay so given this new value function i can construct a new policy now which is going to be greedy with respect to this policy right so so what you are seeing in the right hand side is the greedy policy corresponding to this value function okay now in this example it so happens that after a few iterations you receive you found the optimal policy okay but there is no requirement that you find the optimal policy when you are doing policy evaluation okay so we have to do some more modifications to our setup for finding the optimal policy but is policy evaluation clear any questions about policy evaluation like the problem is well defined given a policy i want to find the value function and now we have an efficient way of doing it by using iterative uh, update equations okay now now let's talk about the second half of this dp right like which is basically policy improvement so i will assume that my pen is charged a bit so now let's talk about policy improvement okay no first of all why are we even interested in policy evaluation what are we going to do with these value functions yeah we can compare the policies okay and why do you want to compare well did you say that the uh, policy is better than the other if its value function is better yes so like predicting the value function is not our goal right like it is just a mean towards our ultimate goal which is finding the policy right so so we often compute these value functions compute these value functions okay for a policy okay to help us find better policies okay now let's say i have some arbitrary policy pi okay now for this policy pi i have computed v pi using the algorithm that we have seen so far okay now let's consider any random state yes okay now i want to ask this question should i keep using this policy in this particular state like the policy like should my action should be equal to policy specified action or my actions would be something which is not equal to the policy specified action okay now how do i make this decision right like so like how do i know if if there exists a better action to take than what my policy suggests any any ideas yeah uh, it reminds me something about the uh... Bandit, when we were, we want to explore some <laughs> Okay. Oh, let's not go to exploration right now because here the MDP is given to you, right? So, like you are not acting here, like really, like you're just solving this problem, uh, like without any interaction. So it's not the question of interaction. So my question is more about: I gave you a policy and I gave you the corresponding value function. now i'm asking you this question so here is a state should i follow the policy exactly here or can i improvise so if i can improvise what information do i have which i can use to improvise you can compare all the actions yeah so given the state if you have the q values which you can compute by iterative evaluation right like so you can compare the q values of different actions and verify if the policy specified action is indeed the one which has maximum q value if it does not then there is actually a scope for improvement okay well if if it so happens then like you are already in optimal policy okay so if it does not then you have a scope for improvement so now consider selecting action a 
in yes okay this action is not by office okay and thereafter following the existing policy okay so i'm considering as delta change to my behavior my previous behavior was to follow the policy all the spaces okay now i'm asking this question like what if i change my action just in one state and for rest of my episode follow the same policy okay now the good thing is we already have an estimate for this so the estimate for this is given by q pi of s comma a right so q pi of s comma a means that what is the expected return if i am in state yes and i take some action a and then follow the policy pi okay so this action need not be the one that the policy gives us it could be any action right so still the q pi function holds so now what is q pi right like so in like remember we only have v functions so we need to estimate q function from the v function so q function is basically expected value of rt plus 1 plus gamma times v pi of st plus 1 given st is equal to s and at is equal to s okay or in other words summation over s dash r p of s dash r given s comma a r plus gamma times v pi of s dash okay now if this q function okay so if so if this q pi of s comma a okay is greater than v pi of s okay then that means that there is actually scope for improving the value function by slightly modifying my policy the slight modification here is i want to copy the same policy except that in this state instead of taking what were action the policy suggests i'm going to take action a okay now this leads to a better policy so first of all do you agree that this leads to strictly leads to a better policy right so it's kind of obvious and intuitive here because we are not doing a lot of changes we don't do 100 changes to the policy we do just one change and this one change is based on this criteria which makes sure that you have strictly better value estimate okay now this concept of improving the policy which leads to better value functions right like so uh, it's kind of explained by the policy improvement theorem okay so so this is one of the very few theorems that we are going to also prove okay because the proof is really simple so this is the theorem let phi and phi dash be a pair of deterministic policies okay such that for all s belonging to capital s q pi of s comma pi dash of s is greater than or equal to v pi of s okay then the policy pi dash must be as good as or even better than pi that is v pi dash of s will be greater than or equal to v pi of s for all s belonging to capital s okay now this is a theorem so it's kind of intuitive right like it, it just says that if you have some policy pi and pi dash okay so if it if it so happens that in all the states like following pi dash leads to better q value than the value of the state then pi dash is strictly a better policy yeah uh, i'm not sure i understand why you can compare the active uh, state action uh, value function and that function okay so that's a good question so now what is v pi of s like like the state value function right like so like it's basically the expected return from the state right 
So in some sense, if you have access to a bunch of Q functions, then the max action, which like the, the Q function of the max action is the expected value of the state, right? So, so you, can, you can compare them because like, this just means that taking this different action. So, okay. So here we are comparing in general, the value of the state and what happens to the value of the state when I take a particular action. So V pi of S encompasses all possible actions, but this is one specific action. So if, if taking this one specific action is better than the current estimate, it just means that my current estimate is based on probably an inferior action. Okay. Okay, so now let's prove this. It's actually a very simple proof. So to prove that, like they're going to take uh, this. Oh. Okay, so to prove that, we are going to take this specific equation and then show that this follows. Okay, so. V pi of s is less than or equal to Q pi of s comma pi dash of s, right? So this is what our initial condition was. I have just flipped it. Okay. Now let us try to expand this and see what happens. So if this is expected value of, okay, R t plus one plus gamma times V pi of s t plus one. Okay given st is equal to yes and at is equal to phi dash of yes okay now this is equivalent to expectation with respect to phi dash r t plus one plus gamma times v pi of st plus one given st is equal to yes <coughs> okay now, now we can substitute this inequality again for this, right? Now this term, V pi of ST plus one is less than or equal to Q pi of ST plus one comma pi dash, right? So now I can just substitute this inequality here. I'm going to use a different color maybe. So less than or equal to expected value of pi dash R T plus one plus gamma times, okay, Q pi of ST plus one, but instead of following pi, I'm following pi dash. So pi dash of ST plus one, given ST is equal to yes. Okay. Now I can repeat these four steps again and again and again. So I can substitute this particular entity with whatever we have done in the past. Okay, so we are going to consider this as expectation over pi dash, RT plus one plus gamma times, okay? So this is basically expected value of pi dash, RT plus two plus gamma times V pi of ST plus two, given ST plus one and AT plus one is equal to pi dash of ST plus one, okay? So whole thing given ST is equal to S, <coughs> okay? It looks a bit complicated, like if you're finding it difficult to follow, I will tell you what I'm doing. You can go back and analyze it again and again, okay? So all I'm doing is repeating these four steps once again for this particular Q pi, okay? So this Q pi is written as this term. So that's what I'm doing it here. So now you can expand this again and again, okay? So this becomes expectation over RT plus one plus gamma times RT plus two plus gamma square times V pi of ST plus one, given ST is equal to S, okay? Now I can apply the inequality again for V pi of ST plus one. So this becomes less than or equal to expected pi dash RT plus one plus gamma times RT plus two plus gamma square times RT plus three plus gamma Q times V pi of ST plus three. I'm directly skipping steps here. So you can continue this as much as you want. So in the end, the final equation is going to be expected value of pi dash R T plus one 
is gamma times rt plus 2 you will just expand the whole thing out okay so this is basically v pi dash of s okay so what i have shown here shown here is like you start with you start with v pi of s and if we assume that this inequality is true then v pi of s is indeed less than or equal to v pi dash of s or in other words v pi dash pi dash of s is a strict like the pi dash is a strictly better policy if it is less than if the equality holds their equivalent policy okay so <coughs> any questions about the improvement um okay so now let's see how to make use of this improvement theorem right like so the whole point here is to make use of it and better, find the better policy we have already seen how to do that in the example so what we are going to do is given a value function given a value function for some policy pi okay now we can construct a new policy pi dash okay with respect to the value function okay so this is a greedy policy so pi dash of s is defined as org max of a q pi of s comma a okay so probably i will not expand this we have done this expansion several times so you know how to you know how to compute q pi of s comma a given s given the value of the state right so now what we see here what we see here is now we are closing the loop okay so we actually started with some random v0 okay now using this random v0 we estimate We start, okay, sorry, we started with random policy, sorry. So we started with some random policy pi zero, okay? Then we estimated the value of the state with respect to pi zero, right? Now, given this value function, policy improvement theorem says that you can use this value function to construct an updated or improved policy, right? So now that updated policy is going to be V, sorry, pi one okay so pi one is a greedy policy with respect to v pi zero of s now we have a new policy which means we can estimate the value function for this new policy right so i can estimate v pi one of s right and i can again do the greedy operation to get pi two right and i can just continue this Okay, at some point, we are going to find some V, let's say, pi k of yes. Okay, so from pi k. And I do the greedy. And this greedy, which is pi k plus one, happens to be the same pi k. So what does that mean? it's the optimal policy right so otherwise like this equation will not hold right so like so so we have reached the optimal policy or in other words this iterative like back and forth algorithm has found the optimal solution in an iterative fashion right like so we, we yeah does it matter on pi zero like where do you start um okay <laughs> It's a good question. So, does it matter like where you start? I thought like this is just a fixed point and not the optimal policy. If this is a fixed point, then probably it would depend on where you start. But if you say that it's optimal, then probably not. Okay. So, now, well, it is indeed an optimal policy. Okay. So, let me tell you why. So, and it matters what is your phi zero. Okay. So, but it doesn't matter too much. Like what matters is 
Pi zero allows you to visit, like, like, like it allows you to try all actions. So let me tell you why this is why. Let me tell you why this would this would converge to the optimal value function. Okay. So imagine b pi is equal to b pi dash. Okay. Now what does that mean? So v pi dash of s is equal to max over a expected value of r t plus one plus gamma times v pi dash of s t plus one given s t is equal to s a t is equal to a. Okay. Now this policy improvement, if policy improvement doesn't make any updates, then that means there is no other improvements possible. Okay. Now this is indeed the optimal value function. Okay. So, so this process will converge to the optimal value function, but only in limit. Any other questions? Okay, let's look at the algorithm first. Okay, so this whole idea of like doing back and forth, right? Like, so you start from pi zero and you do the evaluation step to get v pi zero, and then you do the improvement step to get pi one, and then you do the evaluation step to get v pi one, and then you do the improvement step to get pi two, right? You continue until you reach pi star, from which when you evaluate, you get v star, right? So, so this idea or the algorithm is known as policy iteration. Okay, so now here is the algorithm. So this algorithm is really a combination of the two things that we have seen, policy evaluation and policy iteration, okay? So in one side, like, like first you start with some arbitrary value functions, okay? So, okay, maybe this answers your question. Like we are not, um, okay, it still doesn't answer your question. So. Uh, I will get back to you about the conditions. Like my my guess is like the conditions for the initial policy is such that all actions should be possible. Like so, like if if some of these actions are not possible with the, the initial policy should be as general as possible. Okay. So the most common initial policy that you would start with is just EQ probable policy. So that's the safest policy to start with because then you are guaranteed to converge to the optimal uh, value function. Okay, so now first we do the policy evaluation. Okay, starting with this arbitrary policy, you find the value function. So then once you have the value function, you compute the improvement. Okay, now after doing the improvement, you check if there is any change in the policy. Okay, if there is any change in the policy, then it means you haven't converged. So you go back to step two and then step three, step two, step three. So this is like a theoretically an infinite loop, but we will stop whenever we achieve the threshold. Is that clear? So you will be implementing policy iteration uh, in your assignment. So, uh, so that will give you more idea about uh, like how to implement these things efficiently. Okay, so now there is one problem with policy iteration, which is, it requires you to do this costly policy evaluation step in every iteration, right? Like so, so this is basically multiple iterations, and in each iteration, you have this infinite loop inside. That's theoretically infinite, but practically you're cutting it, but still there is this costly like loop inside the loop, inside the outer loop, right? Like so now, how do we make this better? Any suggestions? You can try to only verify the, the best actions. Uh, well, instead of looking at all the possible actions, you try to have an idea of all the, what are the only featured actions and check on them to see if they, they are even better. Uh, okay, answers. so well, I will rephrase your answer, but before that, any other answer? Well, that's a good answer, but you jumped. So, <laughs> any other answer? Okay, then maybe let's come to his solution. So, yeah. 
not really the answer, but like I have other question about can we merge two and three? So you are doing uh, some kind of uh, uh, evaluation for a given policy and then behaving really. Good. But can you change the update equation instead to behave really good itself? Like instead of well, like I think some both the answers are uh, actually same. So um, well, I think what both of them are hinting at is maybe we can merge these two things. Maybe we don't need to wait for the policy evaluation to complete because when the policy evaluation completes, right? Like, so then you just do a Delta change and then you do the evaluation again, right? So anyway, we are not going till infinity. We are truncating at some point. So why do we need to truncate after hundred steps? Why don't we just truncate after one iteration of policy evaluation? Okay. Just do one sweep of policy evaluation, do improvement, and go to the next week, right? So now there are many, many algorithms which combines this idea in many ways. Like for example, you could do five rounds of policy evaluation and one improvement, or you could do one round of policy improvement, or policy evaluation and one improvement. Okay. However, probably the most efficient mix is what uh, Krunal suggested, which is basically, which has a name actually. Okay, so it's called value trade. Okay, so value iteration just does one round of policy evaluation followed by one round of improvement. Okay, now if I tell you that you're going to do only one round of evaluation and then acting greedily, then I can actually be a little bit more smarter and change my update equation so that it combines both evaluation and improvement. Okay, so how am I going to do that? It's very simple. So if you remember, you do one round of update and then you are taking max, right? So why don't you just take max directly? So VK plus one of yes is equal to max over A, expected value of RT plus one plus gamma times VK of ST plus one given ST is equal to yes, AT is equal to A. Okay, or in other words, max over A, summation over S dash R, okay, probability of S dash R given as comma A, R plus gamma times BK of S dash for all S belonging to capital S. Okay. Kind of this like Bellman optimality. Yes. This looks like Bellman optimality equation, right? Like so R, in other words, value equation is basically taking the Bellman optimality equation and making an update function out of it. Okay. Now this is identical to policy iteration, except for the fact that instead of considering all possible actions, we directly take the max, right? If you remember in policy, oh, we just have, okay, we don't need to remember. So if you remember, if you look at this equation, right? Sorry, where is it? Okay. If you remember this equation, right? So, here you are kind of considering all possible actions in some sense because you are estimating it for uh, like like without taking the max and in this case like you take a max like which is somewhere here so you take the max operation from improvement and put it to the policy evaluation so then you get actually get the Bellman update and like uh, that is the value equation algorithm. Okay, so I think we should stop, but I will stop with the value iteration algorithm itself. So now this is actually a simpler algorithm than policy iteration. Like in this case, you directly you start with some V, okay? You directly update your V like this, and whenever this converges, you stop. And the best policy is given by the normal equation that we already know. Okay, now. In general, value iteration, like policy, value iteration converges a little bit faster than policy iteration. Like as you can imagine, you are interleaving things, right? Like so. Now there are many, many possibilities of like interleaving these operations. Okay. Like for example, like you could take value iteration for every few iterations. Like you can do the sum, and just for one iteration you could do max. So then there is really no differentiation between whether you are doing improvement or evaluation, like you're mixing both in whatever way you want. Okay. Uh, like one good thing about all these different algorithms is in almost all cases, whatever combination of improvement and evaluation you can think of, it converges to the optimal policy. Okay. Now 
proving that is probably few hours of lecture like we will not do that uh, but i just want to say how robust is this idea so you can you can you can be innovative and mix improvement and evaluation in whatever way you want most often it converges okay um, so i still have some more things to say about dynamic programming but probably next week but this good thing is we completed whatever we want to need we need for assignment one so you should be able to finish your assignment one this week so uh, but for next week we are going to finish our discussion on dp and then talk about more realistic problem setting like what if i don't have access to the dynamics function so then i really need to learn these value functions like so without having access to dynamic function so we are going to see few approaches next week and the week after okay thank you